Here we go guys, welcome back to this video. Today we're going to talk about the Velociraptor. Now the Velociraptor, if you're wondering what is this Velociraptor? Velociraptor is a digital forensic platform. Velociraptor can be used for two, there are two purposes for using Velociraptor. The first thing is in the field of digital forensics. And in the other field, it can be used for endpoint monitoring so to say the least Velociraptor is first an open source okay that's the first good thing about it and the other thing when we use Velociraptor for the sake of digital forensics we aim to extract as you know guys extract artifacts that prove a case and when we use it for endpoint monitoring, we want to monitor the endpoint for possible, you know, vulnerabilities, indicators of compromises. So that is the use of Velociraptor. In this video, we're going to also learn how to use Velociraptor and what are the other possible deployment options. So there are two modes for deploying Velociraptor. Velociraptor can work as a server and can also be deployed as a client okay so for example let's say you want to deploy velociraptor on a linux machine as a server so let's say here we have a linux machine and here we have a windows machine the client machine is windows so the setup uh, the setup here is the next machine will be the server and the client will be Windows machine and through the GUI interface of Velociraptor we're going to add the client to the uh, end server so at the end the client machine will be monitored by the server so this means when you want to start working on Velociraptor you will want to uh, know which machine will be the server and which machine will be the client now, in a real scenario where you are using Velociraptor for endpoint monitoring and digital forensic, you will have here multiple client machines, a network of client machines. Endpoint 1, endpoint 2, endpoint 3, E4, E5, E6. And you will have a master server. You can call it a master server. And you will add the client to the server for monitoring. All of this happens through the GUI interface, which we will explore in a while. Or, or why in a while? Now, let's go over the GUI. Okay, so this is a Windows machine. This will be the client machine. Inside the Windows machine, or using the Windows subsystem, we're going to use a Ubuntu terminal. And from the Ubuntu terminal here, we're going to execute a command that will make the Ubuntu system running inside the windows as the server. So here we're gonna use the command to deploy the Velociraptor as a server. So this is the uh, tool Velociraptor and here we are using the configuration file dash dash config. This configuration file will actually be used to start Velociraptor as a server and front end dash v so we're gonna enter remember guys that the credit of the lab material goes to try hack me we're using this room to demonstrate the concept so now we enter okay so now velociraptor started the next step is to take a look at the output In the output we have this line GUI is ready to handle TLS requests on this address. Front end is ready to handle client TLS request at this address. So you have, as you can see, the local host is listening now on the first port 389, and the first port, uh, the other port is 8000. So you're gonna copy that. You want to access the GUI using this. So you're gonna open the browser from here. Paste the link, ignore this warning, 
and we'll have this warning here the connection is not private we're going to proceed to advanced and click on proceed to local host so now there's a name and password there's a name it was uh let's see here there's a name was thm admin try hack me so thm admin and then try hack okay so now we got access to the GUI interface now before we navigate through the GUI interface guys we want to uh, find out how to deploy a client so as you can see in the GUI interface we have this button show all if you click on show all it will show you all of the deployed client machines these are the machines that are uh, or that represent the clients these are the clients or the endpoints that you are monitoring as you can see we have one here now let's assume that the windows machine here will be the client this is the windows machine i want to monitor this machine so gonna click on command the command prompt here and i want to execute the command that will configure this machine as a client so it is the same command as you can see here the same one we used when we deployed the linux server uh, the only difference is, as you can see, guys, the uh, command here, the config, we use the same configuration file, but instead of the front end dash V, we use a client dash V to indicate that this is a client machine. Now, obviously, the client here is already listed and deployed. So we're not going to go ahead and uh, go over the or execute the command. Let's now start navigating uh, and explore the different aspects of Velociraptor. First thing, let's say after you deploy the client, you clicked on the client and now you want to take a look at the information. Here we can see different information about the client, such as the client ID, which is unique for every uh, machine you add. And you have the agent version. This, re this represents the version of Velociraptor. The agent name is Velociraptor, the last seen at and the last uh, seen IP address. As you can see, it's an IPv6. The operating system of the client machine is Windows, and here is the host name that resolves to, and the operating system installed on the client machine. In, the, in this case, it is Windows Server 2019 Data Center. Architecture is AMD64. So this is an overview of the information we got. Other thing here we can explore is the VQL drill down. VQL is the official language used to perform or to execute queries on Velociraptor. It has a complete documentation. Uh, we're going to go over examples of how to execute queries on using VQL. But here, nevertheless, we can see the uh, we can see the additional information about the client, just as the consumption of the memory and CPU over the past 24 hours. So the orange represents the memory usage and as you can see guys the blue represents the CPU usage and these are the accounts found on the machine okay if you go to shell now now in the shell we will have the ability to execute commands on the endpoint now before you go ahead and execute commands you have to understand or to know what kind of operating system are installed on the client. When you have a network of endpoints, you want to first make sure that the commands that you will execute here match the type of the operating system. So here it is Windows, it means in the shell we can I can execute PowerShell, I can execute CMD, but definitely I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna able to execute Bash, I can execute VQL, which we're gonna cover in the other task. So let's now put CMD here, since it's the Windows machine, and execute who am I? Launch. So this is the command we executed. Now we can click on the eyeball here, and we can see the output of the command. Okay. Click back the, out the eyeball will hide the output. Okay. Let's now go to collect it. Okay, so in the collected, we see the artifacts that have been gathered from the machine, and we also see the history of the commands we have executed. For example, 
as you can see first we have generic client information the generic client information is a plugin that has been executed once we uh, once the client has been added to retrieve the system information we have gone over this and the other thing we have done on the machine is the execution of a system command namely we execute who am I so this represents the history of these uh, of the activity done on the machine if you click on one of them you can see the drill down in the lower side the uploaded files if we have any files the requests we have made and as you can see here guys we see the request here and we'll be able to find out what the what is the vql language or the vql query that has been executed to retrieve the uh, to, to to you know to retrieve the output or to execute the command on the os so if you want to learn more vql you can take a look at the request tab every command you execute on the target it will be shown up here as vql so this is the command we this is the corresponding vql command to the home i and then we have the results this is the output of the command we have executed in case if, if, if we executed more than one command the output of these commands will be shown up here and we have the log log of the activity and the notebook now the notebook we will cover notebook uh, in a while the notebook represents the place where you will go to execute vql commands or vql queries okay so now we go back to show all back with the client so i've explored overview drill down shell collected uh, vfs we're going to talk about this interrogate when you click on interrogate what's going to happen the uh, server or Velociraptor will again retrieve the system information from the client. Now the interrogate is automatically executed. Okay, when you first add a client machine to retrieve the system information. If you wish to refresh or to re-retrieve the information, all you have to do is to click on uh, interrogate one more time. Okay. So now we want to go through the process of creating an artifact. So let's assume that we have this client, this machine, and we want to gather artifacts for a digital forensic case. Okay. Now, one of the most popular methods to create an artifact is to show all. Then we go to collected and we click on the plus icon. The plus icon will allow me to uh, start collecting artifacts. Now the thing is, artifacts, as you know guys, they could be disk files, deleted disk files, registry keys, network connections. So they could be volatile memory and non-volatile non data and non-volatile data. Vol volatile data is the data that uh, will be deleted after you restart the system. The non-volatile data is the data that will stay on the system even if you restart it or shut down the system. So this represents the this represents the disk data, and the non-volatile data could be the RAM, could be the uh, uh, the, the running processes, the network connections. All of these are considered as non-volatile data. When you retrieve artifacts, we want to collect both volatile and non-volatile. That's why we have these pre-configured modules to retrieve the artifacts. When you click on a certain module here, we will be able to see information about the module. For example generic client info this artifact is collected when any new client is enrolled into the system velociraptor will watch for this artifact and populate its external indexes from this artifact as well so here using this artifact we will be able to retrieve the information about the client such as the os the host name the architecture the platform okay let's see something else Linux applications Chrome extensions. So here, this artifact, we execute this artifact when we want to collect the installed Chrome extensions. Chrome extensions are installed into the user's home directory. So here it's telling us how Velociraptor will search for the extensions. It's going to search for manifest JSON files in a known path within each system. Okay. So let's go for Cape. 
So we have this Windows cave files targets. So cave cape, we covered cape before guys, which is another digital forensic tool. So cape will collect information about the file system on the target machine. So when we select this artifact to collect from machine, we'll be able to, as you can see guys, uh, collect files on the system, execute commands to retrieve files. So we're gonna go to the configure parameters, see if there are parameters that needs to be configured, and then specify resources. We're gonna leave all of the configurations as is. Review, and then we're gonna launch. So once we launch the artifact, it will show up here, as you can see, guys. So we have actually collected two sorts of artifacts, the generic client info, the Linux applications, Chrome extensions, and the Windows cave files. In fact, in the machine here, or in the room, you are only required to, you know, uh, execute Windows cave files. When this is done, you will see the check mark here. Now let's go back to show all and go over a VFS. VFS is a virtual file system. So the VFS here represents the uh, server-side cache of the files on the endpoint. So you could see here as a file NTFS registry artifacts. The file here, we will be able to, if you click on this, we'll be able to access the files on the host machine or the client machine. NTFS, we can access low-level files. Registry here, we will be able to access the Windows registry and the artifacts, the previously run collections. And we have three important buttons here. The first one will refresh the current directory. The current directory will be synced from the client machine. So we click on this. And now we will we have refreshed and synced the contents from the uh, client machine because we were hovering over registry it has retrieved or synced the contents of the registry let's go to files and refresh again okay when we click on r the refresh for r it's going to recursively refresh this directory again it's going to sync the contents from the client let's recursively refresh the contents and the last one here will download the directory from the client. If you wish to download this file to your machine, you can click on this button to download the entire directory or to download the specific file you are hovering over. Okay, now it's time to, before we start inspecting the artifacts, it's time to cover the Velociraptor query language. Okay, let's quickly go over the query language. So first, let's go over the syntax. vQL looks very much similar to SQL, but it doesn't have the complexity SQL has, such as using the like statement uh, and other uh, you know filters or statements. So basically, in vQL, it's very straightforward. First, we use the select keyword. And then we have what is called the column selectors. The column selectors, uh, let me call them as the, uh, it's very similar to when you uh, select the table, the columns in the table. 
in SQL. So in SQL, uh, you will have, for example, let's go over this here in the board. It's going to be very, pretty much uh, more clear to you. So, so in SQL, let's compare between them. First, in SQL, as you know, guys, we have a DB. Inside a DB, we have you know tables, table one, table two, table three, right. And in table one, we will have column one, column two, column three. Same thing here, column one, column two, column three. All right. So when we want to retrieve the data from a SQL table, we have first to define or select the table. And then after selecting the table, we're going to need to select a column. For example, a sample SQL query could be select. Okay, so here, let's say the table name is users. And the column one is maybe username. Column two is password. Column three is name. So in the select statement, I want to select the column. Select the column name will be password from what from users. Here goes the table name. And if I want to use filters, I apply the where keyword where, for example, name again, it's a column equal to admin. As you can see here, guys, we used after the select step, we use the column. After the from, we use the table name. And after the where, we used again the column. In VQL, it's very much similar. So, first we have select, and then we have the column accessors. Column access are pretty much similar to columns in an SQL. We retrieve, we want to retrieve data from specific uh, accessor or column. It could be file name. So if you go back to the syntax here, so the column access selector, sorry, the column selector, not the accessor. An example here is this one. So select keyword, and then we have the column accessor represents Look at this, it's a directory. Okay. We have, we, or we can define more than one accessor. So the first one here, the selector is full path. And we have find name, right? So we have the selector from the C directory. And we have the selector from the C directory as well. It represents the path of the file, full path, and we have the full name. So select here, find name as name, maybe you can say, and then, so this is column selector. Okay. Then we have the from keyword. After the from keyword, we use what is called the VQL plugin. VQL plugins have their own documentation. Okay. And they are a lot, basically. So think about VQL plugins. They are used to extend the functionality of the query or to apply a certain functionality on the query. Every plugin has plugin name. And between parentheses, you have arguments that you have to use. So after the VQL plugins, we have then where. If you want to use a filter expression. And then comes the filter expression. This is the syntax of the VQL query. Okay, let's go back here. So we can go over the documentation here. So as you can see, guys, you can go over this page to learn more about creating VQL queries. And this is the basic syntax. And this is how to use the plugins.
Okay, so now let's say we want to execute a specific vql query remember that vql queries are used to extract artifacts okay so go back to show all and here we have the notebook okay we can execute queries using the notebook okay so we're going to task 8 to demonstrate the use of vql language to extract artifacts so after you start the machine, I'm going to go over to command prompt and execute Velociraptor as a standalone, not as a server and not as a client. A standalone uh, instance. So we're going to just make this bigger. And from here, we're going to say Velociraptor exe GUI. This way we execute one instance of Velociraptor on one machine. So advanced, um, accept the risk and continue. Oops. Okay, so automatically logged in from here. All right, so let's go to clients. We have one client. And now we can go to the uh, notebook. Okay. So it looks like here that's where we're gonna execute the queries all right okay so we have implemented now the instance now we want to start extracting artifacts related to the print nightmare vulnerability so what does that mean it means i have one endpoint here one client i want to monitor this endpoint for indications of print nightmare vulnerability existence so how are we going to do that? We're going to look at the artifact exit change here at the Velociraptor documentation where we will see all of the artifacts that are shared between the community members. We're going to look for print nightmare. You will see all of the related artifacts. We're going to select Windows detection print nightmare. Once we select this, we will have an idea of what the artifact will do so here this artifact returns any binaries in the windows spool drivers so in our vql query we will have to use this path okay uh, to instruct the, um, uh, the 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 velociraptor to look in this path for indications of any file that could be uh, related to the print nightmare vulnerability uh, with untrusted authentication authenticate authentic code entry can be used for hunt to hunt all dll files dropped you during exploitation of print nightmare to query all attached ntfs drives check all the drive switch i have added several filters to uplift search capabilities okay so what does that mean it means now if you go to the client and then click on collected generate new artifact and search for this print nightmare it doesn't exist here so that's why you're gonna have to you know guys execute it using vql language so we go now to the notebook we create a new notebook we name it thm print nightmare Submit. Okay, click on this. So once we have created the query, uh, the, the notebook guys, we're gonna go ahead and click on the pencil icon. So from here we have, as you can see guys, the uh, ability to paste or create vCall queries. Once we are satisfied with the query here, we can go ahead and switch from Markdown to vQL and it will be exec executed. Okay. Now let's go ahead and explore the query that we want to execute. So this is a breakdown of the query that you have to, uh, you know, execute. First thing, the select clause, the column accessor should be full path. Concatenate the C to the full path and finally. So I already did this for you here. So select the full path here will be from the C drive because the artifacts of the print, print nightmare, if you remember, 
they are under this directory which happens to be under the C drive right so we define the C drive here and then we define the column accessors first one is full path and other one is file name in order to rename these column selectors you can use the ask keyword so full path I want to rename it as full underscore path and file name will be written as a file underscore name then we have parts underscore pe which is a plugin a plugin that makes sure we only retrieve portable executable files it has this argument the file argument we set the file argument to be the, the path of the c drive okay plus full path as pe we rename this to portable executable because parts underscore pe will return only portable executable files found under the c drive so this colon accessor or selector will be renamed as pe and then we have the from keyword after the from keyword we have this plugin parse underscore mft which parses the content of the master file table remember that whenever you want to retrieve files from a client machine you will have to use this plugin because parse mft it will parse the contents of the master file table which is the table at the operating system level or the disk level contains information about all the files and directory restored so you want to parse this every time you have to do something with the every time you have to retrieve files as artifacts from the machine so from and then we have the plugin parse underscore ft it has two arguments the first argument is file name other argument is the accessor the accessor is the type of the file system it's ntfs and file name will be the path to the master file table once we are satisfied with this part now we go to the filter part where keyword the where keyword specifies the filter expression the filter used here is it's actually a combination of two sub filters the first one is not is directory not is directory makes sure that we don't retrieve or return directories in the result we only want files so we use this not is directory and another one is the full path has to be equal to this path part of the c drive this is the path we found earlier here windows pool drives okay another one is pe retrieve only portable executable files let's take a look let's copy this and execute it just going to remove this so we have now the query we're going to switch to vql okay save this and now it's time to execute we have a problem here invalid token we're going to have to remove this okay save and now it is running by as you can see the word calculating indicates that the query now is being run and look what we got we got the list of all of the files under the windows system 32 spool drivers we want to look for a file that would otherwise indicate the presence of the print nightmare vulnerability specifically we're looking for a dll file scrolling down we still have to wait because it is still calculating So now it's finished let's go over the dll's look at these dll's they all look the same which might might rule out the possibilities of them being indicators of the print nightmare vulnerability scroll down we have another page to go over page one print config And all of these also look familiar. We go to page two. And we have this. It's very much clear that this is the nightmare we are supposed to collect. This is the DLL. Now, once you find this, 
you're going to conclude that, oh yeah, the machine is infected with the print nightmare vulnerability. So you're going to have to do a cleanup. Now all of you here, guys, would give you what you need to answer these questions. Okay, the first question starts with task three. So what is the host name of the client? We already learned this. We're going to go to overview and I'm going to grab the host name from here. That's the host name. What is listed as the agent version? The agent version can be found here. In the collected tab, what was the vql command to query the client user accounts? Okay, so we go to collected. I will take a look at one artifact found here. We click on this. We go to requests. As I told you guys, we can find all the vql queries. So here, to query the client user accounts, we can see more than one vql query. The one concerned with the client's with the user accounts is this. Look, it retrieves. Look at the select statement. Retrieves these column accessors or selectors, name, description, name time, as last login, and from here, it uses the plugin Artifact Windows System Users to retrieve the user accounts. In the collected tab, check the results for the PowerShell Who Am I command you executed previously. What is the column header that shows the output of the command? So, here you're gonna need to execute a command. So you're gonna show all shell who am i to cmd and execute who am i okay back to the client to collect it i will click on the last artifact so from here we go to as instructed we're gonna check the results for the power shell my command you executed previously what is the column header that shows the output of the command results as you can see the column header that shows the output is stood out in the shell run the following partial command get date what was the partial command executed with vql to retrieve the results so we go now to going to show all shell partial get date Okay, so go to collected, get date, in the log, you can see the partial command here, partial execution policy, and this will mark the answer for this question. Next question, earlier you created a new artifact collection for Windows K files, okay, let's do that. One more time. So select an artifact, cape, launch. Gonna wait for this to finish. I think we skipped a step. Let's go again and create a new one. And we're gonna need to scroll down. Configure parameters, resources, and here we need to make sure that it includes Ubuntu as uh, a Windows subsystem for Linux. Let's see where, it, where we can find this. Okay, so here we're gonna need to scroll all the way down. Let's search for Ubuntu. Okay, sub system. Okay, make sure to select this. Why? While here from this pane guys, you can select all of the modules to be run by CAPE, the artifacts to collect, but you want to select the uh, Ubuntu on Windows subsystem because that's the configuration of the uh, machine here. The Ubuntu 
which is the server of Velociraptor, is running on, is running as a subsystem on the Windows machine. So you have to make sure you select this, this one, and then you launch. Okay. So here, what this parameter is specifically looking for, we want to a Windows subsystem for Linux. Review the output, how many files were uploaded. Okay, so here, if you click on the first one, you're gonna ignore the first artifact collection because it's not gonna show the correct number of files. The other one shows 19 uh, because there is, an, there is one file that's not being collected for some reason, but the correct answer is 20. So maybe the room author has to, you know, review the machine one more time. Okay, go to VFS. Okay, so which accessor can access hidden NTFS files and alternate data streams? Actually, already answered this when we executed the hunt for nightmare task. It is NTFS accessor. And all of that can be found in the documentation. As you can see, as for every hint, going to refer you to the documentation page where you have to go over the readings and answer the question which accessor provides free like access to registry it is a registry accessor again by visiting the documentation what is the name of the file in the recycle bin okay so here we have to go over the files retrieved from the machine so we click on show all vfs and we can see guys the files you know resync So C, and recursively sync again. You're gonna wait for a while, but at the end you're going to find the file name was desktop. There is a hidden text in a file located in the admins documents. So we have to now go to the users. Okay, it's gonna take very long, guys. So, but that's the way. You're gonna explore the users directory and then head to admin. You will find the flag. Okay, task six. Okay, so what is followed after the select keyword in a standard VQL query? We already explained this, it's the column selectors. What goes after the from, it is the plugin. What is followed by the where, it is the expression filter. What can you type in the notepad? Interface. To view a list of possible completions of a keyword. So. This is what they meant. If you go to notepad here, create a sample notepad, test, test. Click on this and then pencil. So as you can see, the question mark will give you suggested on the completions of a specific keyword. What plugin would you use to run partial code from Velociraptor? Again, hit on the hint and you will find the answer in the documentation here. Task 7. Okay. What are the arguments for parse MFT? Again, you're going to need to look at the documentation, guys. But we already explained this for you at the very beginning. They are the file name and the accessor. What filter is or what filter expression will ensure that no directories are returned in the results? Also, we already mentioned this when we solved the task eight. It is is directory. So when we use here not is directory at the query, where is this? Let me from here. So not is directory. Is directory retrieves only directories. Not is directory as a filter coming after the where statement will make sure that the is directory will give you inverse results of what it's supposed to do, meaning it will not retrieve directories. So guys, that was it.